So maybe check it out with the boys and I be as I mean, I mean, he's a striker. I mean, a short strike who's mobile, who can receive the ball very well, who's dynamic, more than Abu Mahop. But Beanga uh, now is support. These two, they play the same. I mean, I'm saying they stayed too many big passes. Monare play the same and no confident. And also Utito, Masongai, off. So how do we able this boy to uh, uh, perform? You know what that means, right? It's podcast fight. Hey! Hey, listen, it's a special one, man. But uh, uh, as you are, wherever it is you are, and a lot of the people are driving at the moment, uh, so be safe on the roads. Just stay with us. And let's have great conversations that uh, build the nation and the family. Because on Fridays, that's what we do. We bring the best in the business when it comes to statistical knowledge of the game, but also having played the game, previous experience as far as Mark is concerned. And today, there's one burning question I can't wait to get into. We'll reflect on matters of the week. We spoke to Tyson Tlachayo, Super Sports United um, captain. We'll reflect on some of the things that he said. We'll reflect on last night's performance. I must be honest. I saved myself 15 minutes at the end of the match. I missed the last 15 minutes. I did watch a chunk of it. Uh, the last 10 to 15 minutes, I, I don't think I, I was up for it. So that day, um, if, if, if it does come up on this show, I'll be found wanting. But the big conversation is, I grew up um, uh, in what is known as uh, Model C schools. Uh, Bajekas Primary, Littleton Primary, um, Norcan Park High School. Those are the schools I went to. That's where I played my football for those schools. And for a large degree of what I knew, we played with a lot of white kids. Yes, white kids. They were part of my team. We grew up in the Eastern uh, uh, East Rand region together, making the, 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 the provincials together. And you'd see them... Uh, grew up in football and we'd go play at the Benoni tournament, for instance. Hey, it was filled. I mean, yes, there was the, the schools that would come from Davidson and they would be more skilled and dominant, but Benoni High itself and all the surrounding schools had white kids. I'm privileged enough now to, you know, have kids and I go watch them when they do sports at the schools that they go to and I see that again. But when it comes to professional level, if I said name 10 white people playing in South Africa's premier division, I'd love to know who could give me that number. Maybe let me go to Nadim. Nadim? Yeah. Ten white people playing in the PSL. Yeah, I know. There isn't that much. Mark? Ten. No, you, I think you, we could get to ten. To ten? Yeah, I'm sure we could. Please, please try. Nadim, help me, help me, help me. <laughs> okay. Please okay. try. One cross from Arroz. Bradley Cross, Darren yeah. Keat, uh, Lorenzo Gordino, Danny Cardoso. How many is that? Four. <laughs> <laughs> Are we done? Um, Paris, no, no, Bradley Krobla. Um, let's just we have to go through all the different there's thousands teams. of players, we and we're sitting on five. <laughs> Eleven uh, after the Daniel hour. Daniel Cardoso. You've already I mentioned it. Yeah. Already. Yeah. yeah, there isn't. You can't get to that. Thank you very much. You can uh, switch them off and introduce <laughs> the guys in just a few. But uh, it's one of the conversations that we're going to be getting into amongst all these conversations. But also, we have a special guest today. Um, he'll tell us a little bit about uh, what he's up to, but he'll also be a part of the conversation. Beso Snaps sets this one out, and we welcome a former Kaiser Chiefs player in a different tone than what you're used to. So, before you judge and say no, have a listen. Let's take a break. It's where you want to be. It's 13 after the hour six. This is the biggest platform for all things sport in South Africa. And it's thanks to you. We appreciate it. I'm Andy Lengube at Sports Start Amplified with Andy and the mighty Metro FM. And, uh, as is, is normal on a Friday, I'd like to introduce my guest, starting, of course, with a former, and he loves it when I say this, he asks me to say it first up front before I go to Cosmos and Vits, I'm going to start with Swallows, former Swallows man, <laughs> <laughs> Mark Haskins. <laughs> hey, Mark. How are you doing? We missed you last week, man. Uh, no, I, I missed it myself, man. I, just, I obviously had to do duty on TV, but uh, great to be back this week. Good to have you. And of course, uh, the most hated and loved man in South Africa. I think he's more loved now than hated when it comes to this show. Because a lot more people are agreeing with what he's got to say. Nadim Lukele, former researcher uh, and sports analyst with the SABC, statistician galore, of course. Nadim, welcome. Yeah, and it's good to be sitting with the most controversial guy, <laughs> Junior Khan, yeah. Well, let's go straight into him. Uh, Junior yeah. Kanye is also with us, former Kaiser Chiefs midfielder and South Africa under 23 player. Junior, welcome. Hey, Andy, you're going to shine. Hey, I'm going to bonus <laughs> Peter Gatlin. He's mad. He's mad. I know, I'm Peter, I know. Thanks uh, uh, for the invitation, Peter. Because when the Seychelles City only good has been given a chance, so I'm humbled. I appreciate that. Uh, 
Did you did you guys play against each other? Yeah, yeah, we yeah. um What were you when you were playing against them? Well, I think co- between Cosmos and Swallows. Yeah. And I mean there was a point I think Junior came to Swallows as well for a short stint, so yeah. And you guys were in the same team? Well, I mean it was a, a short period. Yeah. Up assessment assessment to Swallows. No, no. When he, got, he ran away when he saw what was going on. So I don't know. He just disappeared. Ah, who was the coach? Yes. Mm. Mm. So now I? No, I think the wind was a PF with him found a soup. Oh, it was reputation. <laughs> <laughs> it was reputation yeah, based. Yeah, I'm a talent. <laughs> yeah, no, talent. No, no. Who was the Swallows at that time? Players. Yeah? Ah, I mean, in his position. Remember? Yeah, in his yeah, position. Patrick Twala. Um, so, controversial figure in himself. Yeah, I know. It's about Patrick Twala. No, no, Junior Kanye, same team. Ah, I know, I see it. No, I now, see it. Cecil Orson, I think that's the main. He was, he commanded the right wing position. So, that was, he made it his own. Mm. <laughs> well guys uh, it's pretty simple the rules are let's be respectful at all times and uh, you know speak from knowledge of statistics and our feelings but all time put the game first i'm going to give you a couple of topics from the week that was we're going to discuss them and share our opinions and thoughts on it let's start on last night um but finally find a drawing with a team that many felt they shouldn't have drawn with one one that first goal perhaps a little criminal uh for that to have gone in in the first place but it, it wasn't the starting 11 that we've used to seeing hugo bruce he rested a lot of his regulars here's hugo bruce now speaking about how he's satisfied with the performance but he worries about the lack of strikers i'm satisfied really not not of the result i would like to win today but i'm satisfied uh, the of the performance totally new team and i'm certainly satisfied about some players i think we show again it showed again and, and what should i say problem for for south african football we don't really have that scorer the guy who, who has with one chance scored a goal if you see the six seven chances we have today and we only scored once this was of course uh, him speaking after the andorra match but before that he speaks about scorers now he gave another scorer yet a chance and before he chose Mayo to join his team, this is what he had to say. Hugo Bruce. Uh, now, okay, with all the injuries we had, I give him again a chance. So it's up to him to show, okay, I can I can reach that level of Bafana Bafana. And if, if he can, okay, we have again a good striker, a young one. So that means that for the future, okay, we have a less problem. I find that Mayo sometimes really out of the game. You're looking at him and you don't see him. He's there, but no action. Nothing. You can't, you can't be like that as a striker, certainly not on the level we play. I then wonder, you put the two things together. Before he says, let's give him a chance, um, and hopefully he's going to prove me wrong and he can play at that Bafana level. After the game to which Mayo played, he says we have a huge issue in strikers, Nadim. Yes, we do. I mean, it's always been a problem since no no one has seriously replaced Benny Makadi. That's the last proper Bafana Bafana striker. I mean, my, many might argue Kacha Kompela is the last yeah, striker. Of course, with him, Bafana Bafana never qualified for anything. He was, but he was on and off. He, he, the reason why he played so many times because Pizzo believed in him. But if you look at Bafana Bafana, he actually is the one who caused Pizzo Simani's job. Eh, Bafana Bafana is the... <laughs> He is the one. He was not scoring. He was not scoring. He was scoring in Franklis, but in the qualifiers, <laughs> Bafana Bafana never qualified when Kwacha Mpela was a key striker. And le- you can search until midnight. Right, we, we remember the the, 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 the you know the debacle of Mbombel. Yeah, okay. So that, 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 that that's the story. If you look at Mayo, Mayo, he just needs to be given a chance because he's been scoring goals for the past two seasons in the PSL. He, of course, he's not going to just go and get get into the national team. He's not a super talent striker that you believe that immediately comes going to solve the solutions. The coach just need to give him a fair chance like he has done to Mahoba and Lipasa and other players for me it looks like he doesn't like him immediately <laughs> before he, he, he plays he's complaining that he's not sometimes now after the match again I mean he's course, not complaining he's analyzing That's of what course a coach but he's never analyzed like Lipasa Lipasa have not scored a goal a single goal for the past five months solid months but it's always been a part of the national scheme team Mahoba he, in the national team he scored one goal but he played every game in the Akon scoring and one the Hugo goal. Bruce what has Lipasa done Lipaza at national level has he delivered in goals 
not necessarily because the last time he scored games per goals per game under Hugo Bruce Lepasa. The last time Lepasa scored a goal for Bafana Fana was uh, again. Uh, I mean, he hardly RFA. played at Afcon, so don't count that. It, but it's been part of the national team ever since. It's been coming on as a sub. The last time he scored for Bafana Fana was okay. against Morocco at FNP Stadium almost like this time last year. I don't believe that Mayo is ready, but he still needs to be part of the national team. Mark? I think, you know, when, when you look at stats, stats say that Mayo's better than Evidence Mahopa and Le Passa. But what the coach speaks about in the clip that we played is where is he in the 90 minutes? Not where is he in terms of goal scoring. Mm. So when you look at the demands of international level, Evidence Mahopa may have scored only that one goal, but he was critical in our getting to that bronze medal purely because of his contribution throughout the 90 minutes yeah. of a game. So when the coach is watching, so maybe this is a lesson then. And yes, I believe Kanisa Mayo is an exceptional talent. He's a great talent. But now he needs to take what the coach is saying to heart because the coach is basically saying, you can't just show up one moment and score and then for 89 minutes, you're nowhere in the you. game. Yeah. And so that's something now Mayo has to take on board. And a lot of times players can you know, get this wrong where they take offense to what the coach is saying. But this is the reality of what the coach sees. So you either take offense or you take heart of what the coach is saying and use it to your advantage. So the coach wants to see more of Mayo throughout the 90 minutes. Mm -hmm. And that's what he needs to do. Yes, I believe that there is a future for him in Bafana. But then he's really going to have to work on his holistic game. Because, uh, you know, the coach actually said in that clip, you can't be playing with 10 men. Because when we don't have the ball, we're mm -hmm. 10. Because maybe you're not doing your business defensively or whatever the coach is lacking or uh, sees him lacking. He needs to now find out what it is that he needs to do to improve his game in order for him to be a regular in that Bafana setup. Junior? Yeah. Debut. Yeah, I, no think topic. We, I think we're not team cool make any so the cool specific I think is got the Uzonda. Did he Uzonda? Yeah. I mean a specific he hit the boy. Did he all he, 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 we observe he came on Kenya? I mean, this guy is picked two holding middle feet at Lala Morales the same. Kurman Kumunisele and Tabang Munar has not been playing competitive football since last year, November. Um, selected the of corn and then he's still calling mm -hmm. continues. And now I need to be honest, he brought him sell him sell I mean, he's a guy who's a lot of offense now with the national team. And the player that was playing next to the boy in Kurman Ai U Masong Ai, he was immobile enough to feed the boy. So maybe check it out with the boy as an abi as a be of a came in. I mean he's a striker. I mean a short striker who's mobile, who can receive the ball very well, who's dynamic, more than Abu Mahop. But Bianga uh, now is support. These two they play the same. I mean him said they stayed too many pick passes. Monare play the same and no confident and also Utito, Masongai off. So how do we able this boy to uh, uh, perform? I mean you were too uh, evident Mahopa. No way to be seen. He can't receive uh, the code pin patient to him. And then Maga explain a cool man we create. Which we create? Uh, I mean, uh, Andy Lee, yes, I think the boy Bam Hater. Give this boy a chance, he's young. He's been doing well for two years. Mm. Uh, he's typical South African. Here's what I know about coaches. Yeah. Coaches can make and break a career. If a coach does not want you. Yeah, that's true. A coach will be vindictive. A coach in the national team setup, the way Hugo Bruce has got it, if he does not want you, he's not calling you up. Exactly. exactly. Look, at, look at him down. So I'm just trying to get no, to no. a point of, of, of him disliking him, the boy. Yeah. He won't even give him a chance because if you give me a chance, I'm going to prove myself and you're going to be stuck with me. No, he almost convinced us that him Dao is not good for the national team. Moby is better than him. Remember, he was not selecting him at all. He almost convinced us that Zwane and Charlie are not good enough for Bafana Bafana. Ethan Brooks was better than Temba Zwane. The coach has his own favorites. Remember this? No, no, no. He, no, but that's not he true. changed his mind. No, like but, but hold on, hold on. He, Even before that, he didn't say Zwane was not good enough. He said, looking at his age, that was his first thing. He said, for what I'm trying to do and what I'm getting to now. And remember, he's got that issue now even. Oh, saying, with Mdao, what was the story? He said, no, I'm telling you about Zwane. Okay, Mdao, go to Mdao then. I hear that. But Zwane was still good enough. He scored two goals for him in the Afcon. He was wrong with Zwane. He was still good enough even with the age. With Mdao, again, he's shown. He was the superstar in well, the, for the For the but reasons even that... With, even with Mdao, he, the fact that Mdao is now an integral part of the team shows that the coach doesn't carry a grudge. If you're good enough initially, and the coach said, Maybe I assessed him wrong. Maybe I got it wrong. 
but then he brought him in and in Mudao is now stake is the best is is the fact is Bafana Bafana don't select players on merit look at Monaro when last he play for Orlando Pirates is Miguel team is Miguel team not a pirate, uh, South African so the fact is you you always gonna select players who are not even part of the team when they play but in Bafana Bafana they will be called as a coach you select players who suit your style you don't necessarily just select the best they don't, they don't necessarily have to play in their teams. You don't necessarily have to select the yeah, best Yeah, we've players. seen the that at international reason, level even. The only reason Monare was... There, so Monare wasn't uh, originally in the squad. Sitole pulled out. That's why he roped in someone that he knew that has been there, that knows what he wants at the last minute. That, does he bring in someone fresh now? Well, that's it. As far as this conversation is concerned, you can carry it on on the socials. We've given you a tidbit of our views and thoughts. Let's move on to another one. Sticking with Bafana Bafana. Tulane Tlatrayo, Tyson, we had him here on the show uh, to congratulate him, of course, for graduating. Great program that the PSL um, uh, has got going on at the moment with uh, taking players to the next level to say, after you play, have something that is prepared for the world after. But we turned a little bit of a corner and spoke about Bafana Bafana. I mean, from captain to not seeing the squad at all. This is what he had to say. I haven't retired from the fun of fun. I'll always love this country. But I know that the coach has said everything that he has said, but I haven't retired from the fun of a fun. Do you still hope that one day that call comes? 100% sure. Because I need to do well for my team for me to be able to, to get that honor to be called up for the fun of a fun. He also spoke about uh, Emil Khan. This is a player that uh, Andre Arenta has helped put on the map because he came out and said South Africa needs to make sure that the half Nigerian, half South African, dual citizenship holder, because his dad is Nigerian and his mom South African, gets into the national team set up now so we don't lose him to Nigeria. This is what Tulani had to say about him being undecided on whether he wants to play for South Africa or Nigeria. He's a 19-year-old, but now he's busy telling me about, you know, that I'm still eligible to play for Nigeria. And I'm like, Emil, where did the passport find you? They found him in Randek, and, and he can also speak African. He knows the culture and everything. I think the father is from Nigeria, and the mom, she's from South Africa. And I'm like, Emil, you South African. And so he hasn't decided in his mind yeah, where he, he wants to play. Decided. Yes. I like that. He speaks Afrikaans. That was the, the best part of that. But also, what does he think of him as a player, Emil Khan, the 19-year-old that is touted to be the next best thing? We don't have it? Oh, we didn't have it there, so it's fine. We can go on on that. Nadim, I'm going to start with you. It's too prone, that one. It's uh, Tyson, uh, so be quick with it. Tyson, okay, with, with, with national <laughs> team, and Emil Khan. With Tyson being in the national team, I honestly think his time is up. Look at how he, he struggled at Orlando Pirates. The reason CBC and Kogi are there because he struggled. He made a lot of mistakes. And this one who are coming, who are taking his position in the national team, are uh, making minimal mistakes. Pirates have been winning trophies. I feel But like how is he at Supersport now? I hear that. You tell me about a past. Yeah, that's the how thing. How is he now at Supersport? At Supersport, he has fairly done well, but he's still behind Kogi. I think it's Kogi and, I mean, CBC, CBC they are rightfully so ahead of him in the national team. I mean, uh, I don't think he's a Bafana Bafana player. In key, he, he always makes key mistakes in the high profile matches. In Bafana Bafana, you don't want that kind of a defender who's just going to make. With Tyson, you never know. He's an accident waiting happen defender. He can make a mistake from Norway. While the game is flowing, one mistake, you're out. So, in national team, there's no luxury. Like, yesterday, it was 1 1. With Tyson, one mistake, then it's 2 1. I, I mean, it was a mistake yesterday that got us to a real uh, email con. Uh, I, think, I think it's 34 years. He we got his 54 caps, he must cherish it. So many players who are talented never even reached 10, po- uh, 10 caps. He has done well for Bafana Fan. Email con, uh, I'll still say he still need to be given a chance as a Bafana Fan. We need center picks. We don't have proper, proper center picks. If he's that good, he's playing for Gavin Hunt. It's 19 years. Only a chance, once he's given a chance, we'll judge him if he can do well or not. For me, for now, he has not done well to be. I, I can't say he needs to be a Bafana Fan starter, no, but given a chance, yes. Junior? Yeah, uh, why changing if he's not broken? I mean, your teammates are like uh, so did at the back. I mean, Ronan Williams, I think they are fluid. Bagwasu Kalipo, he built up is very well, he's good. They've got the goalkeeper that is so comfortable, Ronan. And uh, Ngimboni, the Minukran Kekana. Mm. And mixing him with Koki, I think it's good. Umdaoga right, Singapaga left in Biba. So why broken bringing Tyson? Because Pirates struggle, because Pirates start to pull it back. And then he umbona la magmelek head, crosses he head the ball. Mm. You are right, he's making a lot of mistakes. Sometimes it's mm. unnecessary to dive. Yeah, but you guys are, are judging Ascent. him on, 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 yeah. on, on a bad patch of his career. That Orlando Pirates stint wasn't great. Yes, essentially. I agree. In 10 minutes. Of course, where should we judge him on? Look at him now at Supersport. Yeah. What is he doing Since then? Since he's gone to Supersport. Five what, is, yeah. what, what did we all think of Tyson when he was at Vitz? 
We thought you... we no. We all thought he was a great defender. We all agreed that he was a leader. We uh, all thought up until we caught him when he went to Parrot that you know he can't play for a big it's team. A, it's a, it's a he bad can't patch. Play. It's a bad patch. But nonetheless, it's your opinion and thoughts. And I yeah, uh, can yeah, only but uh, uh, Andile, five minutes ago, you came to get the yellow card unnecessary. Dive the center. You jump all the ho- uh, uh, holding middle feet the defensive. You dive to a person that is there in the middle attacking w- w- jump striker. So, uh, so now you look at and uh, going forward, the game and we get the 90 minutes. That's Tyson for you. Always get injury unnecessary. So for me, I think it's Katsakum Chitus Toli. You are right here at 50 caps. Yeah. It done very well. So now mm. we must chill. Uh, just watch. Yeah. The boy, I think, is a bright future ahead of him. But actually, he's a decision. You come South Africa, we don't win anything. The boy wants to win things. <laughs> uh, I want him to join us. Yes, I love it. Mbonile has got a bright future ahead of him. Yeah. But I wish by mix with these Sundowns. I wish by mix with these With the right um, to and Ronan behind him. I left him I'm sure the boy can grow. And I wish by mix with these Sundowns. Yes, it's good for him. Mark? Let's end with some positivity. <laughs> 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 nah, I, I love Tyson. I think he's, he's been a great servant oh of the yeah, game. Oh, yeah, 100%. Um, but, yeah, you know, at 34 years old, I think it's it's okay for any player and every player should still aspire to play for the national team. And if he has those aspirations, that's great. But if we are going to bring back someone like Tulani Tlachwayo, what are we saying about our future? Because at 34, I think his best football is probably behind him. Um, you know, there are young players that are knocking on the door, one of them being his, you know, his club mate in Ime Okon. So if you had to choose between uh, bringing back Tyson or introducing Ime for the future, you have to go with the latter. So um, definitely he's, he served us well and we, we appreciate his efforts for the national team, for club and country. Been a great servant to the game. But yeah, I think, uh, you know, his best years are behind him. And so bringing him back to the national team won't make much sense. Uh, on the part of Ime, I think uh, it's always going to be a difficult one. But at the end of the day, you know, where where is he going to be most comfortable? Um, is he good enough right now to play for Nigeria? Is he good enough to play for South Africa? Who's going to give him the call up first? Do we just give him a call so that he stays in the country and doesn't play for Nigeria? Is that the right reason to give someone a cap? Uh, because I remember Sean Dundee. I don't know if you guys remember Sean Dundee many years ago. We all wanted him to play for South Africa. But he had dreams of playing for Germany. And they gave him his one cap. And then he never played again. So, you know, those are the things you have to think about. Ultimately, he must decide what's best for him. He must discuss it with his family. And, you know, if he feels uh, more uh, of an allegiance towards Nigeria. But if we give him a cap now, are we agreeing that we're giving it to him just so he doesn't play Nigeria? Because right now, he's not third, fourth, fifth in line for that position. Probably not. And that's why I say... it's, I think he must ultimately make the decision. Not, I don't think any association should force his hand where we force him now like, okay, no, let's secure him for the future. Let's give him a cap so we don't lose him in the future. Has I he think, played for any junior teams? No, not as yet. And he, he, he's not like, because the, the current under-20 national team, he's aged out. So they're only taking 2004, 2006, I mean 2005, 2006, or below 2005, basically. So he qualifies for... So, his the next, his next perhaps, step is yeah. the Olympic team. Yeah, he's, the under But Olympic even team. for that, come the Olympics, he's too old. Because the next Olympics that we go to, the 2005... Because the Olympics this year, yes. 2005 will be the cutoff. So he doesn't... He won't qualify for the next Olympics either. So it's not worth him playing for any junior teams anyway. Does, yeah, he's pretty much aged out of junior, the junior programs. Um, so sure. right now, the next thing is Bafana Bafana. And so... Where does he fit? Oh, the Super Eagles. Where does Ime Ocon go? We'll have to wait that one out and see. Now, last one. Rulani uh, Mukwena. Before we go to our big topic, I'm going to ask you, James, to be quite quick on this one here. Uh, Rulani Mukwena says that Sundown's result would be appreciated by the Soweto Giants. No, I'm under a lot of pressure. I have every game I have to win, and, but that's the that's the nature of the business. You've got to win, and, and I, I agree with you. I think you are correct to just say, I think, for if, uh, as you say, if you were to give the results, to, like the, the current results to any one of the Soweto Giants, uh, I think there would be a little bit more appreciation. But okay, it is what it is. You know, when you're at a big club like Mamelodi Sundowns, winning is not enough. You've got to, you've got to win and win and win and continue to win. And then the context in that one, of course, uh, as you can hear, he's agreeing and uh, reiterating what somebody else had said. So it wasn't a thought out of his head and his mouth, but 
He was asked the question and he agreed with it. Did uh, the coach of Sundowns, Rolando Mukwena. Gina, I'm going to start with you on this one. Rolando Mukwena, you heard him. I don't have to reinterpret him. Yeah, uh, I'm going to love him. Uh, uh, one of the best coaches, young. Uh, and uh, if I'm going to change his personality, uh, he won't be a good coach anymore. Uh, I think he's arrogant uh, and that too much. I have my expectation with Sundowns and uh, with Sundowns, what I love, uh, pff, when they win, uh, a pinna training, winning to another Zamis, no Kala and Abu Kulman and his inner side. Urlani want to win in style. If he won uh, and then team play ugly, he is on top of players because of Kulman and continuity. Are they going to win their next game now? Because Andile, you can play uh, good now and lose four. Okay, you can play good uh, and now. Um, come here, let's say you lose two. The next game, you need a reference. Go to the next game, I can fix there and there. So, Aborulan, they want to win in style and definitely show there's pressure on him always uh, from technical team. And very there's pressure a couple of years because Aborulan has not been winning Champions League. He's brought so many players, high profile players. So, yeah, I, sh- uh, I feel sorry for him, Chita, but. Uh, my expectation, really, I think they set the standard each and every time they're going to get pressure. But Sundowns is one of the best, and Urulani must put pressure on his players, and they're doing well. They're one of the best team in the continent. So mm. uh, they must take each game at a time. That's all. Nadim? Yeah, it, you know what? He's doing well. The fact that he, the last time he lost the match was Stellenbosch from open play. That's the only game he took o- Since he took over from Mangoba Mingwich and Steve, he's the, he has not lost a game ever since. He's been drawn. Okay, sure, he lost in the final. We lost on penalties to Orlando Pirates, but of course his results will be appreciated anyway, not only in Pirates and Chiefs, o- across Africa, because he's still number one, like way dominating the league. He's, he might win the Champions League this season. Of course, he's won the league, the PSL, before it even kicks off. Might win the next Fan Cup. He's just a brilliant coach. I mean, the support. Of course, sometimes they're spending so much money. If they throw two, three matches, they get worried. What are you doing? Because they, they've, they've already have someone in line. Immediately, they, if Rana can lose two, three matches, they will fire him at Santos, even if it's on top of the law. Yeah, they can, because yeah. they, are, they are that kind of a team. They are a winning team. They don't accept losing. Like Chiefs, you remember Chiefs, what they say? They said, uh, Dr. Hezam Tong said, Liverpool spent 30 years without winning a trophy when I was speaking to BBK. They've already expected not winning a trophy. At Santos, they can't expect 30 years without winning a trophy. Three, two games, you are out today. So that's how tough it is. Is, this, is that what you understood from what Dr. K said? <laughs> no, he did say... It's, it's, <laughs> no, you said that. I'm saying that's what you understood from that. Uh, yeah, of course. Except us... Because... Look, <laughs> 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 okay. Mark, <laughs> Mark talk no. to me. Uh, one thing, I think, obviously, with, with, with Rolani and the pressure that they're under... Is it getting harder for them to win games? Yes, it is. Should it be? Yes, it should. That means uh, what I appreciate about Sundowns and the way they do things, they are the benchmark. They set the standard. Mm. And everyone has to raise their game to in order to try and compete. And so um, it's always going to be harder for them. And it's a good thing for the league if everyone is making it harder for Sundowns to win games. That means they are raising their level. I just mm. feel that they need to be very careful um, because... They can be borderline disrespectful at times. I don't know if if, if Teboho was supposed to say it in the media or oh, in the public. Oh, I heard that in the po- in the post match interview where he's talking about a thousand passes. And then let's wrap the league up. Uh, but I I don't mind the wrapping the league up. The thousand passes is more what I have an issue. How is that with. disrespectful? It's disrespectful because it's disrespectful to your opponent when now you are speaking not about beating your opponent, but by you know we used to do that at training where you just keep the ball because you, you're tired of scoring, you're tired of winning. So now we're just going to keep possession, make the team look silly by keeping the ball. Do you think that's disrespectful? Ball. It can be. I'm saying the, the narrative is disrespectful because when you feel like you can just make a thousand passes um, and as if you're playing against mannequins, there's an opponent. <laughs> there's another plan there. And so you have, it's borderline. That's why I said it's borderline disrespectful. So they have to be very careful because that could lead the, to their demise. And it was Rulani first, by the way, who came out and said, I asked for a thousand points. No, no, for sure. And yeah. I understand that. So, But that's why I'm saying when you look at what's happening around the league, teams, how they plan, whatever the case may be, if you now as a coach are planning to make a thousand passes in a game instead of winning the game outright, does that not, is that not disrespectful to your opponent? All right, it's uh, 1838, about to go 1839 in the Mighty Mesh FM. We'll take a break. When we come back, the big topic um, I wanted to address is that of white players. Because, you know, somebody said to me the other day, Andile, you guys complain. Um, and by you guys, I guess you made me, because I do, about the lack of black players 
uh, and athletes in the Olympic team, in uh, the rugby team, in the cricket team, and so forth and so forth, where are the white players in football? A sport that is played by absolutely everybody everywhere around this country. It's not just rugby that little white boys grow up playing and cricket. No, they too kick around a football. We see them when they pitch up all around the world a little bit later on and we hear they're South Africans, but we never saw them in the DSTV Premiership. I asked the guys a little bit earlier to name 10 players and uh, I think they choked out a little. Even Pro Pilani got into it and he, he helped the guys out a little bit. Uh, I think it says Jesse Don at Supersport United and Boschoff at Spurs is the two that he mentioned. But that's just two, Pro. If we add that to the four, then it's six. We still haven't made 10. Now, now, I've, now I've got 10. No, you Googled now. I can see. No, I haven't. I've got Let's take a break. I've got people who <laughs> take a break. 1843. I remember growing up uh, playing at Norkin Park High School. Nicholas Marigimus. He was so good. Um, uh, Greek descendant, but uh, South African. Um, what was the boy's name? His surname was Gomes, though. Also so good. There was a lot of uh, white players that I played with. And you go to the lower leagues of South African football, you go to these junior tournaments, you see both women and men playing the game. What happens at PSL level that we barely, we had to put not only our heads together, we had to have help from outside the studio <laughs> just to name 10 players who are white in the DCP Premiership. Mark, you even now are still very in touch with what happens in the lower leagues, in, 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 in players that are still playing at school level, etc., what happens in the filtration system that white players don't make it? And it can't be that they're not good enough, because that's not true. Why is it that they don't filter to PSL teams? I'm going to say this to you, and maybe it's going to be a bit controversial, but there's a lot of black players, if you ask them, they would have gone a different route. They wouldn't have played football. A lot of guys I've heard say, if, if I knew better, I wouldn't have gotten into this because of how the game has treated us and because of how the game eventually just spits you out like you were never there like you never contributed and this may even be more controversial white players have options so if you're not absolutely going to make it as a player you're going to choose a different route and so a lot of our players don't have those kind of options don't have the luxury of choice so they've gone down this path and they have to see it through whereas a lot of white players they'll go down the path and if I mean, the path is not absolutely clear. If they're not absolutely going to make it and, you know, it's not a foregone conclusion, they have options. That's the, like, that's the reality of the situation. I, I, I'll take you back to a player like Gareth Devine. Gareth Devine was a Bidvest Fitz, uh, uh, well, back then just Fitz University before Bidvest got involved. He played for Fitz University so he could get his education. As soon as he was qualified, he was still able to play. He's now a, is it a biokineticist or, but he's, he's got his own practice, but he's qualified as uh, in the medical profession. But he left the game when he was still very able to play, purely because of what the game is like. People don't understand. They think it's glitz and glam on the inside. They think it's all sunshine and roses. Being a professional footballer in this country is not as glamorous as people think it is. And a lot of white players have other options. And not they glamorous choose that. because... There's no money. It's not glamorous because it's... I don't get... Why, why is it not glamorous? Yeah, what is, what it's, is? it's not as fruitful as people think it is. They see you on TV. They see you playing every week and they think, no, you're living the life. You're earning a lot of money. Not the, In my day, I mean, now it's, it's relative again. I think even now, there's, you know, there's a select few money for players. everyone, yeah. There's a select few players who are earning great money in the PSL. But then there's 16 teams. There's one team we know that pays exorbitant salaries. The others, there's a few that pay good salaries. Then there's, you know, teams that pay not much at all. Then there's teams who fire you and hire you back on lesser <laughs> salaries. So <laughs> those are the realities of our football. Yeah. And so when you see this coming in mm. and you've got other options, you're going to take the other option. Hmm. That's the, the reality. Nadim? <laughs> I'm tempted to agree with Mark, but another thing that's when you have to look at. I like that, Luke. When you want to agree with Mark, you have to stop yourself. <laughs> yeah, but if you look at it, I mean, how many teams are from the suburb areas? Like, where? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I stay in. Oh, you mean like uh, teams that are, are based in areas? Yeah, I stay in Four Ways. Yeah. So in that all sentient area around Four Ways, Douglas Dale, there's no PSL teams. So if you look at those, most teams are township based. So 
that I that's also there, I, no, there's no. clubs, there's clubs I in those areas. No, no, I'm just saying in the PSL, how many teams? There's no team that comes. Oh, you from mean the PSL that comes from? Okay, in the sport is right there. In the suburb area, so I mean, th- they say I guess you, c- you could say super sport. You could say, um, yeah. you could, say, but but I vets, g- you could have said even that they still fit within there. But I guess uh, of the teams that are there now, yeah, it could be super sport. But super sport do have white players. Again, they do have. They even the crop is there. They they do those they, that, that team is there. I think that could be one of them. But then again, I have to say, Mark is right. The chances that are there. Black, black players are a lot of them. They are more talented than white players. If you look at the players... No. Like, if you look at... I, I, I don't know if I can agree with that. I honestly believe so. I, be, I I don't believe there's a white player in South Africa. If you look at the moment now, who can, who can say this is the best in that position? Who's yeah, but what? they're not making it. They're not making it. They're not there in the PSL. So let's not... The competition is We couldn't count to 10 the in the The thing PSL. is that you are competing against 95 or 90% black people who are so talented, who are pushing themselves there. I think they are... P- I know parents, kids who are taking their course. So you th- you think by birth being black means you're more talented at football than white? No, it doesn't mean that. That the Messi and Ronaldo they are white, but they are Ballon d'Ors and all those. What I mean that in this country, one in this in the area suburbs area, there are no PSL teams where you will feel like they can go to their development and all those kind of things. There's That's no PSL teams in, in the, the Northern township. Cape. But there's there's plenty of players that come from the Northern Cape. They are, but very few. They've got less. No, Northern Cape, you, can, you can't even name maybe 15 players in the PSL who are coming from Northern Cape. That's why Chimita, we still know that. So you're saying... No, because because can I, sorry, uh, Andy. If you're saying that which PSL teams are in the township, is Kaiser Chiefs in the township? Yeah. No, they, they're not. They're well, from there, but they're not yeah, there. Yeah, but they're almost there. Like nature. No, 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 they're not there. not there. They're well, far from there. You can't walk to Soweto from... Yeah, you know? but no, it, you can. I mean, it depends where you wait part of Soweto. <laughs> ah, Naturena, you can. Actually, actually, you can. You can. actually they're in no, Naturena, you, which yeah, is a suburb. No, you yes. can. Yeah, but it's a suburb where? Next to a township. Naturena is a suburb next no, to a township. No, Nadine, that conversation doesn't hold water. Okay, but they are. Uh, well, it does to me, because if you look at Super Sport United, the team that you feel that is in that kind of areas, it does have... even. Sundowns is not in Mamelodi. Which They're in Klorkop. They are from Tembisa. They are in Klorkop. They're not from Tembisa. They're in Klorkop. Yeah, Klorkop is, Klorkop is No, but even no, it's so. Not. It Some is. It's white people in Klorkop. Ah, uh, please, Andy. We're from there. There's no... It's, but white people, where are they? You're from Tembisa. Klorkop is a suburb. But where is... Which suburb is there? Which white people stays in Klorkop? Where is Sundowns developed? Where's the academy? It's in Klokop. No, it's no. not. Yeah. It's at Clapham in Pretoria. Yeah. And that's a suburb. So well, how many... They're, they're, even if you're saying that, what you're saying now, which PSL team is based in the township? Which PSL team runs an academy from the township? None. Because we don't have facilities in the townships. Bottom line, you can't run an academy. Uh, but if you a, look at teams like, academy, if you, you look can't at, run a if you look at teams like, let him finish. Let him finish. You can't no, no, no. Yeah, this time. No, let him finish. No, it doesn't. Finish. It doesn't matter. Switch more. <laughs> you can't run a professional academy yeah. in the township purely because there are no facilities. Mm. That's where we've fallen short. Yeah. In this country, we failed our, our 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 footballers because there are no facilities in the township. That's why you're not going to find an academy running successfully. That's why even township-based teams struggle because there are no facilities. We failed in terms of developing in this country purely because of one thing: facilities are not there. The basic necessity is not there. So you we, fi- have, you we final- have the Nike Center. We have a Nike Center. We have one um, double. It's two fields next to one another. Yeah. Artificial turf that services the whole of Soweto. Do you know how big Soweto is? It's ridiculous. Right, I need to give Junior an opportunity to get yeah, in on uh, this as well. Yeah, Andy, I think football is business. No, you need to pay for your talent. And then thing I understand. I think these people they're playing this game for fun. And Kurmanga white people. Uh, they were playing for fun using their talent. Now it's about who you know. Uh, it's no longer about talent. I think right Umak Magati they had the choice. Gutibuana they grow up under proper foundation. And you when you look at how many rugby players after playing the game in Kulmang where they struggle. The foundation is proper. Uh, and in football, they know very well which uh, I mean, you had so many players uh, same route in where after football, everything is over. So, Andy, I think, to be honest, the foundation of football, I think, yeah. Let's take a break. Nadim is still seething and uh, breathing heavily. Exactly, 1854. Let's get to you. It's been quite a conversation here today. Um, I like it when we take on uh, matters as well, not just, you know, footballing stuff uh, in 90 minutes. 86 0 Let's start with your voice notes. 
listening and delay good evening and delay and all metro fm listeners around the globe our coach hugo bruce is saying he's satisfied about the performance of bafana bafana against andorra but not satisfied about their scoring of goals they are failing to score goals i think uh, coach must seek help from us he must come here at hamukogwaila there are many strikers. I'm not joking. I'm not joking. Then why I'm aren't they in PSL like teams first Kambisa, before the coach Kambisa. gets them? Not in the PSL. Even in the lower leagues, you will get one. It's Moses Mokwena Hamukokoida. Moses, put them in the PSL first. You know what? The issue of Mayo, it's a very sensitive issue. And uh, I believe like South Africa, I mean, certain to change about changes in to the right to attach to a change. I mean, for Umayo, Umayo is not a center for what? That's cool many things. Umayo is not that kind of a striker. Also, hold the ball, I uh, understand, uh, attain uh, and all that, the uh, 80. No. Umayo, right, the lab, the lab, the lab, the Ange na penetrate abantu because you am poor umayo mumbega le pambi le si center forward umayo skillful umayo gmele as a Nepal I understand that's the reason even nagu pirates the pirates carry you know a leading top goal scorer be good so villagers and so villagers bega jalagu bega jalagu mitli la zang ba ze ba mshen chuzo villagers ba umbega le guba center forward so tina sine problem currently especially I think is anala my European coaches uguti a player just because to score from the middle field then so ya convert you and you center forward and then that so ya pa zi sega ge au sa kora mako la bantu seba kulu magab yo yeah ne I appreciate it let's go to callers now Johnston is out in Cape Town Johnston hi welcome Hi, I'm Dilea. Well, you know, no, I'm good, man. The guys are here. Go for it. Good. You know what? Um, I'm like a little bit, you know, uh, disturbed when coming to the decisions of the coach over our, uh, you know, stars in football. Um, Andile, we, we, we've got players that are capable of doing like a national team, but they are sidelined. Like who? Some yes, some like like for an example, the, these players that those that were supposed to be elected like um, uh, Ongezama, uh, uh, regardless mm-hmm. of whatever maybe what happened at the end. But now you know what there are players, except Ongezama, there are players that can stand up and fight for the nation. Um, so so Ongezama is is the only player. That's is, is there another player? Is there somebody? Is Ongezama no, is the player that you're fighting it, for? It, it, I don't, I don't, I don't um, want, to, Johnston, I want us to, to speak facts. I mean, we're all footballing people here. We know everybody. We know the players. Who it is, you, Gezana, you think, is supposed to be in the national team and the coach is overlooking him. Uh, who else? Yes, um, and the other one is uh, 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 Lyle Foster. What's happening with Lyle Foster? Since, but you know what's uh, happening with Lyle Foster. Lyle Foster said he doesn't want to play for you. And then, okay, yes, if that if that is the case, uh, the player like uh, uh, the one that uh, the, the caller just spoke about, uh, we should have had them when we go into TEF. But Maya wasn't Maya wasn't were, Maya wasn't scoring goals. He wasn't doing well. You know, Cape Town City had to start him from the beginning. He had to get his confidence. You know what, what I'm avoiding, Johnston? I don't want us to say this coach is like this when it's based on two players. You know, you're saying ah, it's, there's it's players that he should him. be he should be bringing on that he's not bringing on. And and then I'm you give me gonna, one player. You know, you know, I'm still I'm still gonna go back to the at, at club level. Yeah. If 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 you can check, there are uh, there are uh, uh, teams that doesn't perform well. But when you check on their their the, the, you know style of play, there are players sometimes they 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 sit outside and then you put a player because of the name and at the end of the day, day you lose games. For an example, I can give you a uh, 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 Shanti in Kaiser Chiefs. If you can take the player for the play for Shanti and take uh, uh, this boy who's this um, 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 a, a baby guy who's playing number three, he's from the development side. He, he's, he's performing. He's still young. He can do things, you know, for for, for the team. Justin, I'm gonna but I'm gonna ask you for something because I can tell you love football and you you you, you really want to make your point. Have a thought. Have think about it. You can call me. It doesn't matter what I'm talking about. But think this thought out properly because I don't think you've thought it out right. Um, think it out right and then let's have that conversation because at the moment it's it's not properly and fully thought out um, and of course also do put in mind as far as Gezana is concerned do you know why Gezana is not part of the team right the coach did come out he lost his travelling documents 
Yeah, he, he pulled out. I mean, so he, he was, was called to, to be the part team. of the camp. Yeah, yeah, for this squad, he was called. Yeah, he was called to the team. So just bear that in mind as well. When you, yeah. hence I said to to Johnson, it's not that we don't want to. You can't just say, ah, this coach, blanket. Junior, thank you for coming. I appreciate you. I hope you had a good time. Yeah, no, I am not. Uh, it was the first time Guzu Shinde is positive, so I'm glad you came on here. Uh, uh, you, you're well <laughs> balanced. You're very well balanced. We appreciate you. Nadim, yeah, sure, uh, for the first time, somebody else made you look good, huh? Uh, you weren't the only, <laughs> bi- you weren't the only villain here. Mark, <laughs> thank you so much. i got to go. Uh, but, uh, thank you so much to Junior Kanye. He's got a new show that's going to be coming up. What is it called? Uh, Junior Kanye Fixing the Game. It's a reality show. A reality show on TV on Zanti Magic, yeah. We can't wait for it. We'll check it out there. And uh, you can catch a lot of this conversation on there as well. My name is Andy Ngube. This has been absolutely fantastic. Pella, pella. And so me.